All right. How is it going, folks um, out there on YouTube? Uh, whether you are joining us live, uh, we're great. Uh, we're very glad to see you here. We're, we'll be happy to uh, chat with you uh, during the presentation, or whether you're checking this out um, on the replay. Thank you very much for taking the time. Um, my name is Kevin Winery. I'm part of the uh, Dino team, and I am joined today by David Sherritt. David, how the heck are you, sir? How was your day? Oh, yeah, great. How have you been? I'm doing. I'm doing great. I actually was just at uh, that conference last week in Texas, which was uh, a great event and always always fun to hang out. Actually, it was not even that much warmer than it was in Minnesota uh, because climate change is weirdly ravaging our winters. So it's been like in the 40s and 50s here. So, uh, but it was really good. Uh, how was your weekend? Yeah, it was nice. I didn't do much. Sweet. Yeah, that not much is not a not a bad way to go. Yeah. But uh, what you, I think you've kind of undersold it because you've been uh, working constantly, basically well, not quite round the clock on Dino 2.0 and uh, on the Dino 1.4 year release, uh, which we're here to talk a little bit about uh, today. So uh, the agenda for uh, the folks out there, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take some time to talk through some of the things that released in uh, 1.40 and uh, some of the things that we're most excited about. So we'll we'll give a couple of demos walk through a few features of the new release. And uh, we'll also uh, take any questions that you have in the chat. And I see we already have some questions about uh, JSR, which is the new uh, experimental uh, registry that we've been working on for uh, Dino and other uh, JavaScript environments. So uh, we could certainly uh, take a few of your questions there. And uh, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the road to Dino 2.0, which uh, 1.40 was actually a major step in that direction with some deprecations and stabilizations of APIs as we're kind of trying to line up all of the pieces for uh, for the 2.0 release. So we will get into all of that and more, and uh, very excited to do so. And uh, I think the first thing we were going to uh, talk about, um, if I check the, go to the notes here, uh, was going to be the temporal, 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 temporal API. I'm not sure, like, I read it a million times. Yeah, temporal, I think, might be the way to say it in <laughs> words. Um, but uh, new date in JavaScript is a little busted, and uh, the temporal API is a little bit nicer. So, uh, well, yeah. Or would you be willing to give us a little bit of demo, a little bit of a demo of how that works, and uh, kind of talk through the API a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, just some background on uh, the date API or temporal, and why it exists. So, right now in JavaScript with the the date object, there's uh, a few kind of shortcomings. First, there's not a way to uh, like describe different kinds of dates, so, or like parts of dates. So like, say you want like a time only uh, part, a date only. Um, there's not a good way to work well with time zones uh, or just like with, with the data, uh, like with an instant uh, of time when you don't like care about time zones or you like, it doesn't have the time zone component part of it. Uh, and yeah, so the temporal API brings that for us. And let me just share my screen. Um, one second. Awesome. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for a minute, just because like sometimes you just want to do math on like months, you know, say and say like what's seven seven months after this, and and you don't necessarily need a year associated with it. So, yeah. yeah. So it's convenient in that sense too. Yeah. Okay. Let me make this bigger. All right, one second. Let me get the example from the blog post. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is the the new temporal uh, API. Uh, let's see. So on it, you have different things like calendar, duration, instant, plain date, plain date time. Anyways, lots of uh, different ways of uh, working with with dates compared to the, just the date object. Uh, in this case, we're representing just a month and a day. So uh, the month here, 12, and then the day, 15. And from that, we can do operations on it. Uh, in this case, it's this is the exact same uh, example as the blog post, by the way, if you want to check this out and run it. Uh, so then the birth date, you can convert it to actually having a year. So birth date in uh, 2020, uh, 2030 and then get some information about it. So yeah, if we run this, so I'm just gonna run this as is to start. And you're, you'll see that uh, temporal is actually uh, not defined. And the reason for that is because uh, it's currently unstable. And in order to get it, we have to actually provide this unstable temporal flag. 
And now we're uh, getting this in output. We can see there's uh, that, uh, you know, that month, 12, December 15th in 2023. Uh, and then from that, we can get the day of the week. That's going to be in 2023, which is uh, seven in this case. I'm actually not sure what day of the week if, if, is that based on that Sunday or is it uh, Saturday? I'm not mm, sure. That's a good, that's it's a good it, question. It doesn't tell us, but um, uh, yeah, the docs could be improved there. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's using it. So we have this other, like right now I had to run with this unstable uh, temporal here, but I could also put that in the Dino JSON by doing unstable temporal. But actually right now in the mm -hmm. latest release, there's a bug where this doesn't work, but in a future release, that'll work. So then you can just run uh, without that flag. But that's, that's something that's coming up in a, uh, a patch uh, to Dino, I think next week. Um, so it's a bit more Got convenient it. than having to provide it here. Yeah, that's true. That can get a little nasty. Usually if you're using the unstable flags, like a common pattern would be like to have a Dino task that sort of captures all of your flags um, associated with it. But the uh, Dino JSON configuration will end up being a little cleaner um, Yeah, to manage that stuff. Yeah, and there's like a whole bunch of functionality in here, like from Epoch uh, Seconds and getting an instant. So this is, oh, so it's here just about these APIs. So in the actual uh, uh, spec for temporal, there's, there's this good representation of the different kinds of uh, objects you have. So, you know, there's our plain month day, plain year, which is uh, year month, sorry, which is the year and month, you know, plain date, so year month day, plain time, just the time, plain date time, which is, yeah, date, the time. And then an instant includes uh, also that, uh, like, well, it'll be like the, like the time offset with uh, in uh, UTC, and then a zone date time is when you want to start working with time zones. Awesome. Yeah. So, qu question actually I have. So, um, so the temporal API is in stage three in TC thirty nine right now. So it's not. Um, yeah, I don't think it's implemented by any browser vendors yet, right? Um, I'm not sure. I don't. Th I feel like it's not. I, like I, I would have to double check, but like I would, if I had to bet, um, I would bet that it's not. I'm ninety nine percent sure. But yeah. like it's, it's in uh, like TypeScript. If you use like TS, uh, TSC, right? Like I, because like usually once a feature gets to stage three, that's usually when the TypeScript team starts to roll it in. So are we picking it up from like our TypeScript compiler, or is this something that you can use in JavaScript within Dino as well? So yeah, you can use it in in uh, JavaScript, but. In this in this case, the types actually come from uh, Dino Unstable uh, that lib uh, file, and uh, I'm not sure it's actually in TypeScript yet. I don't know where this uh, the temporal types came from. It might have been copied from TypeScript. I don't know if they maybe they they'll have it in the next release, or maybe it's already in there. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, we seem to just put it if it's in Dino unstable.d.ts, this lib file, then it was probably added from somewhere else and not TypeScript. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's right. I, I don't know if it is in actual TypeScript yet, but um, that ends up being one of the things that I like uh, about uh, Dino and TypeScript generally is it's usually like where you can uh, try these features first before you can see them in the browser. So, uh, yeah. so that's very awesome. Um, one other thing that came in that like changing gears from uh, temporal a little bit uh, is like it's a very small thing, but it's something from the Dino or from the Node ecosystem that you use all the time, which is these magical double underscore dir name, double underscore uh, path name, uh, or dir name and file name. Excuse me. Uh, and for a while, like you, you'd had access to that same information in Dino in various ways. But uh, yeah, in Node, you had you were able to do like kind of just you know use these magic variables. Um, but now we've got these in Dino as well, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So just some quick background. So in yeah, in Node we have the underscore underscore dir name underscore our file name. So that will output for me um, yeah the directory name and the, the file name of this file. But in a uh, uh, and a Yes, M module. Uh, so if I run this, 
yeah, these aren't going to work. This is it. Sorry, I'm running a node here. And so, yeah, node recently introduced the import meta uh, file name and their name. I don't, I don't know if my node version is going to have it. I think 21 versus dot 11 is the latest. Uh, oh, OK, it works. Um, yeah, so node uh, added these to import meta. And because of that uh, precedence, uh, now we have them in Dino. So I do Dino run. All that NGS, uh, I get them as well working in Dino. So a big annoyance previously is that you had to use import meta URL, and then you had to get the path only for that because I'll just show the output of this. So the URL, it's going to be like a file specifier, as you can see here. And what some people would do is they would just be like, oh, okay, I need, I need just like you know, this this path part of it. So they would do new URL and dot path name. And they're like, oh, okay, that's great. You know, looks the same, works on my system. But actually, this this doesn't work on Windows. And so what you'd have to do in, in Node is uh, import from Node URL. And then I forgot path or follow URL to path is actually the, the correct uh, Way of doing this. So, yeah, this this was pretty annoying, and you know, people would do it incorrectly. So now this is going to work. Uh, it, I'm on a Mac here, but uh, yeah, on Windows this will not not work. And so, yeah, it's just annoying to have to do all this. And now we just have it right there. Uh, an important thing to note is that these can be like undefined, and the reason for that is if this was like on a this file. Uh, this module was on like a remote server somewhere. Uh, it would uh, return undefined because there's no file name, there's no directory name. It's some HTTPS specifier, so that's why those uh, uh, these are potentially undefined. Nice. So yeah, much uh, much improved over like having to do you know file path conversions with like stringing together multiple APIs. So small quality of life bit. I'm glad we we're able to bring that in. Uh, and uh, a, another feature, actually, that um, I'm pretty personally stoked about is uh, the decorators uh, proposal that's, that also has been in stage three for kind of a long time, actually. I think it was as recently as, or as long ago as early 2023 that the decorators uh, proposal got into stage three. And um, now we actually have it in, uh, in Dino, in, uh, in 1.40. And with like all the new uh, all the new syntax, so what what if what if anything do you know, David, about like kind of this this API generally? Like what um, why why has it kind of been around so long yet hasn't made it to browsers? Like do you even know? Uh, I'm not sure the entire history around it. We initially had um, like a there was a proposal for decorators that uh, TypeScript adopted as experimental decorators, and in Dino that actually was defaulted to true, uh, which uh, I think was like a little bit of a mistake uh, to have an experimental API uh, as true, uh, like as, as enabled by default. But then, yeah, then the actual uh, decorators provo proposal finally is stage three or four. I can't remember now. Yeah, it's in so, stage three now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, there's like some slight differences um, and it's now uh, enabled by default in, in Dino. So if you need the past experimental decorators, uh, you have to explicitly opt into that now. Yeah, for sure. And the and I will say like the uh, the current iteration of the API is significantly nicer than like the experimental decorators version of the API. It's it was a, it's been a nice little upgrade. And um, I've got it going over here. And when I run this program, it just kind of shows um, wrapping a method in a decorator. So if you're not familiar with this uh, syntax, um, a decorator is a function. Uh, and this uh, this decorator here, you will add it to, new, to a uh, either a property or a constructor uh, or a instance function. You can also add a decorator to a class, like at the top level of the class, and it basically allows you to add functionality to a uh, to a JavaScript class without having to change the internal implementation because. 
um, you know, it would be pretty easy to like, say, if you wanted to wrap some logging, uh, maybe you were doing some performance testing or something like that, um, or you just needed diagnostic information. Um, you could certainly add this lo like logging logic into your instance function, but um, anytime you wanted to reuse that same logic, it would be It would be kind of annoying to have to do that um, in you know the ways that you would have to do it. You would have to like you would probably externalize it into a function. There's ways you could keep the code dry, um, but decorators give you like a really nice way to kind of um, add functionality and sort of wrap these different features of a class. Um, notably, a decorator does only work on classes and, uh, you know, getters and setters and properties, constructors and instance functions of classes. So you can't add a decorator to like a top level function, say. Uh, so there are uh, some limitations. I think there is a proposal for how you would do it or like there, there's sort of a, a separate proposal for how you would do decorators outside the context of a class. But uh, this example kind of shows how this works. So this like at syntax says, I want to use the logged method uh, decorator in conjunction with this greet instance function. And uh, a decorator is itself a function uh, which takes two arguments. So this original method, this is going to be the um, you know, a reference to the high, like the actual function object. Um, so you can, uh, with that, um, with that function, you can call it, it with the original arguments that were passed in, um, you know, to the function. And then there's also a, uh, a context and I have it set to any here, uh, but the, there is a, uh, like a function call context object, uh, which there are uh, types around or something along those lines. And, um, you can get some information about the, uh, about the context in which the method was uh, method was called. Um, sometimes that information is useful, uh, depending on how you're uh, how you're trying to build one of these functions. And what you're going to do is uh, this function is going to return a function um, which will replace the uh, replace the original. And the first argument to the function is going to be the instance of the class that you're calling this uh, method on. And then the second uh, or the you know arguments after that actually are going to be uh, you know any arguments that were passed into the original uh, method. So in this case, we're just like wrapping the wrapping the original method in you know two console log statements, uh, which is you know of questionable use. But like the uh, times in which this uh, really does become useful is like if you have transformation steps that you want to uh, you know apply to multiple. Uh, multiple classes without having to sort of dirty up the inheritance for um, every class that you want to apply this uh, logic to. So in this simple example, again, we're just kind of wrapping this function, um, calling the original method, storing the result, and returning the result. So uh, this is sort of what that uh, decorator looks like if it's very, uh, very basic. But you can also uh, have decorators take arguments. So if I were to add like say a prefix to this like maybe instead of log you know i would like to you know make this say something else so i'm going to pass in like a string that says like you know info say and like that's what i want to use sort of as the preamble to my logging um the way that i do that is i actually wrap all of this this decorator i'm going to wrap that in another function uh which takes arguments that can then be used to generate my uh decorator so um, in this case, um, I'm going to still call it logged a method, um, but this time I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to take a prefix, which is a string, and then I'm going to return this whole guy uh, from that. Um, Oops, we'll call that something different just for clarity. Um, but now I have access to this um, prefix string. So instead of, you know, hard coding this, I can say, um, you know, prefix plus, you know, whatever this happens to be. And um, now I have a slightly customized behavior um, inside this uh, decorator. And when I run it, um, you can see I have like a slightly different, uh, slightly different preamble there. So uh, 
again, decorator is super useful uh, for sort of adding metaprogramming into uh, classes you're creating. Um, if you have uh, you know functionality that you know you want to share across classes, um, this is this ends up being really useful. It's also uh, useful for uh, framework authors like. Um, there have have at various times been decorators that have been used in like Angular or Vue.js to uh, sort of annotate like which uh, properties inside an application are supposed to be reactive. I think uh, MobX, the uh, like state management library, also uses decorators as a part of its API. Um, so definitely a useful concept to uh, to get familiar with if you haven't tried it already. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really nice. I've used it for. Uh, like memoizing, or I don't know how to pronounce that word, uh, like memoizing. Memoizing, out. yeah, we're, we're struggling yeah. with the pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> that's one, another one of those words that you just read. Uh, yeah. yeah, just like uh, you just plop it right on top of the method and uh, uh, you don't, like it can cache the result of the last time it got called. Um, yeah, for sure. Caching is definitely another one of the examples you see a lot um, with the like decorators uh, demos out there. Um, so yeah, very, very, very cool. Um, definitely worth checking out. This, I believe, is made available via transpilation, though. So this is not available in JavaScript code. Am I right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and right now, there's um, we discovered like uh, a bug with it so that it, like uh, with the transpilation. Uh, I'm looking into fixing that right now, but um, it's uh, yeah, in certain scenarios, there you might run into uh, some error. I forget what it was called. It was like something computed key is undefined, if it, or like not defined or something like that. If you run into that, it's going to be fixed uh, in the next patch release. But uh, I, I'm not sure the exact scenario where that happens with decorators. But uh, okay, well noted. If you happen to step on that landmine, uh, know that help is on the way. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, well, very, yeah, very early in the week here. So, uh, next bit I want to talk about is um, something that has been like a part of like the imports in Dino for a while, where um, with HTTP imports, it was often beneficial to have like actually two uh, sort of entries in your import map. One that might point to like a mod.ts file, which is like the default exported um, object or interface from a module. And then you'd actually set up a second alias, which had a slash after it, uh, which would allow you to kind of import other files within the same module. Um, but we cleaned that up a little bit in the most recent release. Yeah, so, um, so here we go. Yeah, so what you've had to do in the past is for import maps, you have to define, okay, here's your bare specifier, and that bare specifier maps to this. But it wouldn't implicitly do if it had a slash on the end. So if I excluded this previously, um, actually, what? Oh, it looks like it doesn't work in the LSP right now. So yeah, this is what would happen. Uh, you'd get this, uh, this error message, and so let me just run like this. So this is going to work. But now in the latest Dino, this should, oh, let's get this out of the way. This also works. So previously, uh, yeah, you had to specify both. And uh, it wouldn't pick up this slash hooks. It looks like, yeah, there's a bug in LSP here where it, uh, hasn't been hooked up, but yeah, we basically take this import map that's like this, and then we automatically add to it uh, these extra ent entries. Cause it was a bit annoying, you know, like keeping these versions uh, the same. Yeah, it was annoying, but uh, yeah, now it uh, it should be much better. And once we fix that LSP bug, it'll, it'll be even better, so. We'll be able to see it there and then it'll, yeah, um, yeah you won't have to add the extra. Um, extra bit there, which is also like a little bit gnarly. There is like the leading slash, like with the NPM module name that you had to put in there, which yeah. might not have been immediately obvious. Yeah, the, re the reason why that it needs to be put there. So uh, previously, actually, let's see if this works. Yeah, so um, the, yeah, the reason why that was necessary is because this is not a base URL actually. Um, and so to make it a base URL, mm -hmm. you have to add the slash. Um, 
but yeah, yeah, does not, uh, not ideal for sure. But, um, yeah, so the, another minor thing, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, but, uh, one thing that I thought since we're kind of coming up to the half of the hour here, um, and I suspect we might have a couple of questions, um, is, uh, you know, some of the deprecations, stabilizations and removals that came in 1.40, but specifically with an eye towards Dino 2.0. So I wonder if you might just like speak to that a little bit, like kind of what, what stabilized, what got deprecated and maybe kind of think, talk through some of the thinking there. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that's going to be deprecated in Dino 2.0 is the window global. So you can see here, uh, window is, we get this like, Dino lent. Uh, warning now about when using it. And it's deprecated and scheduled for removal. Basically, you know, replace that with global this. So the reason why uh, we're making this change is Dino itself does. It's not. It's it's not like a browser in that it actually has a window. There's no window uh, in Dino, and so you would get a lot of code that would do stuff like if type of uh, you know window is undefined, then you know do browser stuff here. And uh, that would uh, cause a bunch of issues because Dino would always get thrown in with the browser code. So as part of 2.0, uh, we're uh, going to deprecate that. There is like, if you want, still need, like say your code breaks without the window global for some, for some reason, um, we're going to document ways that you can inject uh, a window global back in. It's pretty easy, just like a one line change. Um, and, uh, yeah, some other deprecations. So I think like metrics is going to be deprecated. Um, you can see again, another Dino lint warning. And actually I wonder what happens when I run that. So, yeah, so in, uh, I'm on, I'm on Dino 140.3. If I was on dot two or before, you would get a, a deprecation warning. And we found that, um, like initially when we did the release, we did a lot of uh, warnings because you want to be alerted to if any of your code is using some deprecated APIs. But we found it a little bit too aggressive. And uh, yeah, we're currently evaluating exactly how we want to approach this going forward in, in 2.0. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's going to be a few APIs being removed. I know like the metrics one, one of the reasons for that deprecation is of, um, it exposes like a lot of the internals of Dino. And so that means we can't make a lot of large changes we wanna make uh, to Dino's internals because of that uh, information being uh, displayed. And um, what else is there? I think right. Yeah, so Dino write is going to be deprecated, and uh, it's going to be replaced with like say you uh, how do you const file? Yeah, so instead it's going to be you, you have to call the actual methods on write uh, on like the object itself. For example, here here I just open up a file, and then there's a there's write on the file, and there's Part of the reason for that deprecation is the use of this uh, resource ID. And again, having this like resource ID exposes a lot of the internals of Dino. Um, and that's, there's there's some, if you go into the issues, there's some uh, reasons for all the deprecations. But uh, yeah, we wanna try to still make it as uh, uh, not so painful. Uh, and so, yeah, we're still evaluating like is this something that's really going to happen in Dino 2.0? Or um, it'll definitely be deprecated sometime in the future. It's just a question of one. Right. So getting some of these out there, like stabilizing some APIs, the the hope is that, you know, by when Dino 2.0 rolls around, like we have already telegraphed a lot of these changes. Um, yeah. Because we're hoping to still like, uh, like Dino 2.0 definitely coming out, I uh, this year, we're looking at uh, when that's going to uh, when that's going to happen, uh, basically as soon as possible. But maybe uh, that would also be great too to hear like, kind of about like what the team is thinking about, like what are the big work streams underway uh, to get 2.0 over the finish line. Yeah, so the for 2.0, uh, big part of it is uh, yeah better node compatibility, and uh, so part of 
well, let me just say the high level things. There's the node compatibility. Um, there's the the new registry that's being worked on, uh, JSR that you might have heard of. And um, what are the other main things Kevin do? Remember, I think like that's the Nokabat and uh, and the registry are definitely the sort of headliners of the of the group. There, there's a few things here and there, um, but I think there are, but like a lot of them are of this nature, like APIs getting stabilized, uh, and and like things coming out of unstable, yeah, getting stabilized and deprecating some other stuff that we don't want to be uh, saddled in in 2.0. But um, yeah, we have a, actually a couple questions from the chat that would be good. Like maybe we can take a quick pause uh, to get to rewinding a little bit. Uh, but like with the uh, import map stuff that we just looked at, um, there's some question around like, is have we deviated from like how import maps are handled in these in the spec? Um, my understanding is that it's actually additive behavior. Um, but yeah, I would love to you know have you confirm or deny that. Yeah, so if uh, like if you create an import map fall here, um, and then you reference that in an import map, uh, like map.json, and then it, say I were to put, you know, just that in this uh, import map, uh, I'm not going to bother showing it, but uh, that would not work because you know when you reference an import map, that's part of the import map standard. But the Dino JSON is a, uh, even though like we've aligned sort of with the with the standard here, it's not really an import map. It, this is like an extension uh, to the import map. We take this input and then change it to be according to the import map standard uh, within Dino itself. So within the Dino JSON, it's, it's an extension to uh, the import map standard. It's not like. Uh, the actual import map standard. Yeah, so slight, slightly different, but um, I think, yeah, you can generally expect that the imports in Dino JSON are sort of like a superset of what you can do yeah. with an import map, it, sort of the raw import map um, that is standard. And if you want, if that behavior is important, certainly you have the option to just use your own import map. Yeah. Um, a question too about uh, FFI, any new stuff in FFI in 2.0? Uh, anything that you're um, hearing about? Um, yeah, I don't follow FFI too much. I know there is uh, like a big part of uh, FFI has, has just been the web GPU uh, improvements. So there's this ability now to uh, bring your own uh, window for web GPU and you can use FFI uh, as part of that. Uh, I'm not super uh, familiar with it. Uh, I wouldn't be able to show a demo, but uh, yeah, if, if you're interested in uh, web GPU and uh, yeah, being able to bring your own window, it's uh, it, it seems pretty exciting. Uh, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Yeah, for sure. And another question too, the, uh, which I think is a good one. So. Um, I, I think like, well, a couple things in response to Bob's question here. I, I think there might be a 141 still. Like there is a possibility that we will do a 141. It seems actually likely that we'll do one before 2.0. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to 2.0 for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being like, uh, we are going to actually be removing some of these deprecated uh, interfaces. So like that'll be a breaking change, right? Yeah. Um... And uh, wait, let me just read it one more time. Yeah, so we're, we're going to still do a 141 release, but it's just going to be some additive uh, features. And uh, that release is going to be, I think, around the, the 23rd of February. And then the deprecations and different uh, changes will come in 2.0. So another example of like a breaking change that might happen is the bring your own node modules. Uh, might be the default in, in Dino with the package JSON. So uh, right now, this is the you know unstable uh, bring your bring your own node modules. And what I can do here is I can do npm init, and then uh, I can do npm install and say code block writer. And I've just installed that. And then right here in this code, I can do import writer from I might need to restart the LSP right now. Um, 
restart. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm getting it. So what's happened here is uh, Dino is now maybe wrong. Uh, Dino now uses uh, because of I've installed the package in the package JSON. I've used npm to install. Uh, it's uh, doing node resolution to understand this. So that that might be another uh, thing coming in 2.0 where uh, you can use whatever package manager you want. You bring your own node modules folder, and then if there's a package JSON, Dino will uh, use node resolution. You'll you'll be able to disable this uh, obviously and switch to like auto install or having Dino manage your node modules folder. But uh, this is going to make a lot of node projects work out of the box um, and just have Dino by default act more like node in when you're in a node project with a package JSON. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, like using a native sort of NPM client to manage dependencies from NPM is sometimes kind of your only option because a lot of libraries will sort of cheat um, and expect the structure of the node modules library to be laid out in a certain way. So have it like installing node modules using a native or like sort of a actual NPM client um, will increase compatibility quite a bit in those instances. A um, couple other questions uh, from the chat. Lots of good ones. Let's uh, we'll keep diving into them too. By the way, if folks have questions, this is the best way to use the time. So, um, do we have any idea of what uh, will most likely be leaving unstable in two point oh? Like, are, are there some things? Yeah, like what? What are we hoping is going to stabilize? Uh, so, in the latest release, uh, like we've been trying to stabilize things, even because a lot of the APIs it doesn't like require. Um, uh, a 2.0 release to stabilize them. So we've, we've started stabilizing them even before uh, 2.0. So uh, like, for example, if you uh, have a connection, like an HTTPS connection, uh, being able to unref that, uh, that's stabilized now in uh, 140. Uh, Dino Connect TLS stabilized, Dino Connect uh, for Unix transport, uh, and a bunch of terminal stuff. Um, yeah, so we're, we're trying to do that even before 2.0. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be some other stabilization specifically for 2.0. It might come sooner in 141. Got it. And like kind of on that uh, same topic, there was also a question about uh, KV stabilization. And uh, I don't imagine that KV is going to be coming out of unstable in 2.0 uh, for a few reasons like that. There's a few like uh, ways in which we might approach like designing and packaging the API that could still change. Um, like it's possible that um, we, we might end up extracting it from the actual runtime itself and possibly distributing it as a, um, you know, as a standalone package. Like there's, there's a few API um, design and packaging things that are still kind of uh, being being figured out. Um, so I, I wouldn't expect KV to come out of um, unstable in 2.0. I think there's some reasonably big questions to answer still about like how that API is going to work. Um, question from um, about uh, JSR. Is JSR going to be browser compatible? Can you use uh, JSR um, packages in you know a package you're going to bundle up to be used in the browser? Yeah, so uh, JSR, it's still under the hood HTTPS imports. So um, even though there, it's using, um, so actually, let me just show an example here. So uh, sorry, uh, maybe this works. Might not work in LSP, but. Um, yep, OK, that worked. Uh, yeah, so it, it, JSR uses uh, yeah these kind of style of, of imports. And then you can specify the version constraint here. I forget what version is published. Um, maybe 0 0.1, probably not, but yeah. Uh, so you, what happens is it needs a way to map like these kind of bare specifiers to uh, HTTPS URLs for the browser. 
And that's really the only uh, limitation uh, with JSR. But the thing is, is that you can use an import map. Um, and you know, I could specify, uh, uh, there could be something that could be built that could analyze all these specifiers. And from that, create an import map that you can then use in the browser. So I would say, uh, yes, it uh, should be possible. I think right now there's an issue with when a browser um, imports uh, some of the HTTPS URLs from JSR, it won't work at the moment, but that, that could be fixed. And um, I don't know if I would recommend distributing stuff, uh, like using the registry as a CDN. You'd probably want to use something else for your code, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and certainly like the, even depend like independently of how it works today, the intent is that you know JSR is a place where you could like it's going to be a general purpose registry for ECMAScript modules and TypeScript, and you know using those things in the browser is certainly an intent of the platform, and we'll make that experience better uh, over time in all the ways that we can. Um, for uh, we'll get back to some other JSR questions here in a second. Um, just speaking to this briefly about uh, blob storage and just object storage in um, you know Dino and Dino Deploy generally. Um, this is certainly uh, you know a frequent ask and uh, like a pretty logical extension. Like we've been working on some cloud primitive APIs for like uh, cron jobs and queues um, in addition to KV. Um, this is definitely very high on that list of pretty obvious next steps and things to look at uh, as we're you know, looking at other APIs in this space. Um, no immediate plans to share around like when we're gonna start working on it or when it could be available, uh, but it is definitely something that we're looking at and we think makes a lot of sense uh, and would not be shocked to see it, uh, see an experiment in this vein at some point in the future. Um, so a question about uh, is JSX pre-compile supported on uh, Dino deploy. And um, I'll confess that I don't actually know what we mean in, by pre-compile in this case. Like I'm, I'm assuming taking JSX and turning it into JavaScript before it deploys. Um, yeah, there's the, the pre-compile uh, step that Marvin added. And I- Oh, think, sure, for fresh. Um, yeah, there, there was an open uh, issue about it, I think last week. Sorry, I'm looking at a different tab. Um, yeah, I, I believe that's being worked on. Uh, I'm not sure if it was supported yet, but uh, yeah, that, that was, we thought it was enabled in deploy, but uh, I believe it wasn't. Okay, so that is uh, implementation of such is underway um, at the moment. So not at the moment, but we are working on it. Um, the uh, other question, a couple other questions about JSR coming in from the chat. So uh, will the repo ever be public? So folks can submit issues or PRs. And um, actually, I don't know if that, I don't know if I know the answer to that. Yeah, has that been discussed um, on the team yet? Uh, it's, there's, uh, yeah, some debate about uh, open sourcing it, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet uh, what the conclusion is, but it would, it would be ideal in my opinion. Yeah, I, th I think like that's like, we we have a pretty strong bias towards um, open sourcing just generally. Uh, but the uh, one thing that definitely is going to be possible that I know is important is being able to like self host. And I think like how we do that might impact like how we how we treat like the the actual source code and how we distribute and stuff like that. Um, we definitely will have like more formalized mechanisms for feedback um, before like before and as we launch. So like you will be able to submit feedback somewhere. But in terms of like will the code be open sourced? Is there going to be you know development in the open on the registry? Um, I think the final answer on that is TBD. But it would certainly be preferable if we feel like that is going to be something we can do feasibly. Um, question about, uh, will JSR replace Dino third-party modules or slash X? And uh, the generally, uh, yes, we do want JSR to sort of supersede Dino land X over time. Uh, however, uh, HTTPS import URLs are going to continue to work in 2.0. So there isn't going to be sort of a, a drastic, you know, 
now all of these um, HTTP imports are not going to work in your code anymore. Um, they won't be uh, supported within JSR. So like if you have a dependency which is using, uh, if you have a dependency on like a, a module that's being distributed by an HTTPS URL, um, you will have to uh, you know, do that slightly differently. Uh, one sort of migration path, which is reasonably easy, is like if you if you vendor the modules that you're using via HTTPS import URLs, you can use like local versions of those um, in a module that you would then publish to JSR. So there's a few kind of different ways you could potentially work around it. But yeah, I mean, the goal is like we want to have JSR replace the HTTP imports in most cases, um, largely because we have run into problems with like deduplication of dependencies um, where, you know, with HTTP imports, it's hard to know if you're pulling down the same version of libraries um, over and over again. There's also been problems around like infrastructure stability. Like let's say you're importing from an HTTP URL, which isn't available at the time when your build system really needs it or um, at runtime say, uh, there's just, there, there've been enough issues with this um, mechanism where we feel like, uh, something with it like a more traditional uh, package manager is actually a, just a superior developer experience in a lot of ways. So uh, that's that's kind of where we're leaning at this point. Yeah, and, and because of uh, now we have a, like a concept of a package, just a lot of things uh, work much better. For, for example, like a small thing like in the lock file, uh, we can be a bit smarter and actually like remove stuff uh, from the lock file uh, and figure out uh, yeah, a whole bunch more things about it. Um, there's like JSR imports, you know, everything's downloaded in, in parallel within the package. So it's going to be faster um, and it's going to, there's some functionality we have for type checking that's faster uh, and uses way less memory. So um, it's overall, it's it's much more exciting. And uh, I think, yeah, it, like if, if you're a library author, I uh, recommend checking it out and um, uh, it should be a, a much better experience. Still working on some things, but yeah. Yeah, and if you go to jsr.io today, by the way, uh, feel free to join the wait list and we are kind of onboarding people to that um, as we go. So if you wanna check it out, feel free uh, to do so. So uh, other questions. Um, so will we will we see some kind of marketplace integration for things like a partner provided CDN? Um, I mean, I'm guessing that this is more of like a Dino deploy uh, type question, um, which uh, certainly like, you know, plugins, integrations, like stuff like that is a place where we want to go with the deploy platform eventually. Um, no concrete plans as to when that's going to happen. But uh, that functionality is usually very beneficial in uh, in cloud hosts like ours. And, and there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we know Dino deploy is probably never going to, or is unlikely to provide as a first party. So like, uh, it's, it's certainly something that I would expect to see at some point, um, but no immediate plans um, within deploy itself. Um, another question about, will JSR replace the use of DNT for Dino package authors who want to publish their packages to Node? I think probably uh, not entirely. It will work in a lot of situations, but there's, uh, for example, like there is um, uh, like Dino specific APIs or um, you know, some functionality you need to polyfill in Node to get things working well. And I think DNT is still going to be there for that. Um, it's it's going to be a bit of a question of, uh, uh, like, there's, there's probably some better integrations we can make there. Uh, but I, I think probably in, in many cases, people will still want to use DNT. Um, just also like it... Um, yeah, and running all your tests through on, on Node. Um, and some sometimes it, yeah. it requires like some uh, explicit configuration and, and telling the, the, like telling the build tool, like DNT, how, how it should look. So yeah, I, I yeah. think probably not entirely. I think a big thing too, like uh, because JSR is going to be ESM only. Um, if you need to, if you need or want to support a common JS interface to your module, uh, like uh, DNT will still do that for you, and uh, JSR won't kind of be in the business of supporting 
common JS modules either. Um, so I feel like, but like, because there is going to be a node compatibility layer for JSR where you can use JSR packages within node code, um, may, maybe so. Like there's probably a lot of packages where you can get away with just publishing to JSR and then having uh, node users use that as well. Yeah, there, there actually might be a, an ESM to common JS transform when able. Like the, obviously there's certain cases that it's not possible, like top level weight. Uh, but there, there actually might be a, a common JS transform. Oh, today I learned. Well, maybe so. Maybe there will be a common maybe, JS. Yeah, yeah, still uh, weighing the if it's pros and cons of that one. Excellent. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for the awesome questions here. Um, well, I uh, we with about uh, ten minutes left, we have a couple things we can talk about uh, still. If you have more questions for us, feel free to keep throwing them in the in the chat. Um, but uh, one thing that uh, I thought would be interesting to uh, chat about a little bit is changes to how we're going to handle unstable features. And is there anything more to say on this than what you just said, kind of with the Dino JSON? Um, things? I think there are some philosophical changes too, but we would love to hear you kind of talk through that. Yeah, so uh, we talked about that a bit with uh, Temporal. Let me think of... Oh yeah, I guess like for example, like previously I showed this bring your own node modules, this unstable uh, flag. So previously, um, let me just get rid of that. Oh, I got rid of my code too. Uh, let's see how far back we can go. Okay. That worked. Oh, because now it uh, used Dino to install, right? Um, let me try to think of an example. What's a flag? Uh, bear, bear node. Sloppy imports. Oh yeah, it's fun. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, I'll show bear node imports. So that's from this. You know, you can write this in node. Um, and if, okay, let me show without this. So without this, I uh, like Dino recommends to be explicit and write, oh, I'm importing this from node. Uh, but sometimes it's like, oh, I just have way too much code. I don't want to bother changing it. Um, yeah, so now we've before, I wonder if this is going to work with just unstable here. I don't think it will. Yeah, it doesn't. So it's telling me to add this node prefix. And before it would, um, uh, we would just throw this all under unstable. But when the unstable flag is set, uh, you know, it enables all the unstable features, but it's not exactly the best way of doing things uh, because some unstable APIs, they might've not been properly vetted yet, um, like for security, uh, reasons, or um, you know, you want to be safe and only opt into certain unstable uh, functionality. So yeah, now we've we've added this. You can specify unstable bare node built-ins, and now this is going to work. So this import it works, and our code executes. But then, as because this starts getting like really granular, and it might be annoying, you just want to enable it for your project. We added that. Uh, up here, it's unstable. Um, where you can just put it right in the Dino JSON. And a nice thing about that, as well as the LSP knows about it because you specified in the Dino JSON, um, it's still telling me to do like a quick fix to update the specifier there. Uh, but uh, yeah, now this this will work. So th yeah, that's uh, part of the, the new approach to unstable APIs. You basically opt in. Uh, to the functionality you want. So for example, again, uh, a.ts, let's export class a from this a.ts file. And in node, um, you can just do stuff like uh, in common JS, you can just do dot a like that. And if, if this was like a, a pseudo, like pseudo ESM, common JS, this would work. So a lot of people might have projects that just do this. 
you know, even though I have bare node built-ins enabled, it's it's still erring, but it's recommending, oh, you, you know, you can run with this sloppy import. So now I can take that, uh, put it in my you know, JSON file, and now it works. So, and again, there's a, should be a quick fix for this. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the uh, very, very useful to be able to track it in the Dino JSON. But uh, one thing too that I think is a slightly different behavior from past releases is like the LSP is going to do like type checking uh, for unstable APIs without configuration, uh, right? So you would still have to include the flags at runtime in order to use the features like when you execute your code, but like in VS Code or whatever, you wouldn't have to do any additional configuration to get type support for those APIs. Oh, yeah. So you're talking about uh, Dino, um, what's an unstable one? Or like OpenKV, say, like off of oh, yeah. the, yeah. Yeah. So previously, yeah, it would have been kind of annoying. You'd have to specify like a VS Code specific setting for Dino unstable. And now, yeah, that's just available, even though it says unstable. A um, bit of a thing to watch out for is, um, yeah, now you're not going to get type checking errors if you use this without uh, the unstable flag. So you can see there it's undefined. So let's actually call it, so which is more like what you would do in an application. So yeah, now it's going to you know, say, do you know what? Open KV is not a function. Uh, but I believe, what is it? Unstable KV? Yep, that's the one. Yep, so there it is. Um, yeah. Working. So uh, minor change, but I think a uh, minor change that will maybe prevent some uh, frustration versus create it. But um, it's true, you'll still get the runtime errors if you don't uh, specify the proper flags. Yeah. All right, well, with a couple minutes left, let's try to grab some of the last uh, couple questions that came in. Um, so uh, ARM support on Linux and uh, you know other Linux distros as uh, asked about here. What, any, anything that we can share on this uh, on this question? Yeah, so uh, we've been, yeah, like I really want uh, ARM support on, on Linux and uh, also Mute. Muzzle or Musil? I don't know. Musil? Yeah. Muzzle? Uh, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. Uh, another word you only see right now. Yeah, exactly. I've only yeah. seen that in characters. Uh, so. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're working towards that. There should be ARM support, like official ARM uh distribution like releases. Uh, right now there's un uh, some unofficial releases for it, but yeah, we, we really want to make that uh, uh, distribute, especially ARM uh, still GNU uh, uh, support for Linux for um, Muzzle and Musil, uh, it uh, that might come a bit later. I think that still needs support in Rust EV8 um, and that doesn't exist at the moment. But the ARM, the ARM, uh, like uh, just for GNU, uh, is in Rust EV8. All right, sweet. There we have that. And then probably the last one we'll have question for, or time for, in terms of questions. Excuse me. Is are there any plans to add something like npm audit um, to JSR? I imagine is uh, the thrust of this question. Uh, there's no plans at the moment, uh, but for uh, like. There is, um, I forget what that technology is called, uh, where basically everything's kept on a ledger uh, in the- oh, Like a blockchain, you mean? Yeah, um, what, NPM uses it. Uh, it's like the, co the code signing thing. I forget. Um, that's that's going to be added. But... Oh, I guess I don't even know by what you're referring to. So like, I, um, but yeah, it sounds like the, like uh, specifically with NPM audit, uh, we, it's it's certainly like something that we know is uh is a feature that is useful like in that well I mean it's it is useful at the end of the day it's a little bit noisy um, it can be a little bit uh, troublesome but um, ultimately is pretty useful. Um, I'm but yeah, probably not a lot. But uh, yeah, I can't find it at the moment. But yeah, there'll there'll be some some things uh, related to that. There won't be out of the box. There won't be something like npm audit at the. I mean out of out of the. Yeah, at the very start, there won't be uh, an audit. Okay. Well, I got some other questions coming in here, but we are at the top of the hour. Um, we'll we'll see if we can bring these to Discord and we can answer them for you in the uh, 
you know, asynchronously there. Um, so thanks, thanks for those uh, last couple of questions. We'll we'll try to sneak those out. Uh, but uh, for those of you again hanging out live, um, asking us questions, that's uh, we've enjoyed having you here. Um, we're super excited about uh, 1.40 and hope you are as well. Um, and yeah, we'll continue the march forward towards uh, 2.0 and uh, getting things even uh, more tidied up than they are right now. But again, yeah, if we didn't get to your question, please feel free to ask it in Discord. We'll try to bring a couple of these, um, a couple of these questions there. And uh, again, thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time.